Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I'm your host, Heather McFadden, and this is the place where I get to walk alongside you and connect you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. And in this episode number 446, I'm welcoming to the show, Ben Bevis. And I just saw this mom as we went through the meeting uh, move from being stressed out, single mom, to just being at peace and to even being tearful in a positive way because she saw these yeah. intentional adults investing in her son and seeing him come alive when he heard the ways that he had gifts and his strengths and ways they were going to keep walking with him. This week, Ben Bevis, a passionate advocate for youth empowerment through faith, he shares his insights on gathering mentor circles around our young people. He is the founder of Encircled, and he's dedicated to help launch the next generation with sustained faith. He does this by helping equip you and your grandparents and mentors to ground youth in their identity in Christ, help them discover their God-given gifts, and create a vision for their lives. You're going to hear about how you as a parent can gather a mentor circle around your child in this episode. So let's get right to it. Here we go. Ben, welcome to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me today, Heather. I'm always thrilled to get help from mentors. And then today it's double whammy about mentors. Before we get into all of that, Ben, would you introduce the listener to your family? Yes. I am married to my wonderful wife of 20 years, Sarah, and I have three kids. I have a 17-year-old daughter, Sophia, a 15-year-old son, Reed, and a 12-year-old son, Sam. You're right in it. We're, right we're like it. right in that same zone. Um, and I don't know about you. I became very aware of my voice getting quieter in my boy's life mm. and the need for outside voices as my boys got into middle school. And it actually is a big impetus for the Don't Mom Alone theme is I thought I could be everything for my kids and how – that's actually like not giving them the fullness of the experience of life if I rob them from wise others, other adults. Yeah. And so partnering with teachers, partnering with, you know, youth workers and other parents even of my kids' friends has been so huge in my journey. And I would love to know, I know this is your nonprofit, this is your business, this is your thing and within yeah. Circled. What got you into it? What motivated you to become so passionate about this topic? Wow. Well, I'm trying to give the short a short version. Um, <laughs> I've I've done youth ministry for 30 years. Wow. Um, I am a licensed therapist, a life coach, a mentor, and I think where um, God put um, my heart uh, really turned my heart towards mentorship and and helping get uh, circles around young people was after I worked I worked with a nonprofit here in Minnesota, working with at-risk teens. And I had a young man um, that I mentored for a while, um, and he struggled. He had a lot of hard stuff, uh, fatherless, lots of things going on. Um, and then I lost touch of him. And unfortunately, I got the call that he had um, overdosed on drugs. And I did his funeral. Uh -huh. And I remember being there doing a funeral for a 22 year old young man. And I looked out in the crowd and I just saw these young people that were lost and that were um, sad and grieving. And God put in my heart this, I forget who it was who wrote about this, but a holy discontent mm -hmm. where there was this moment where I knew I needed to do something about this. And I knew that young people weren't meant to live life on their own, but they're meant to live their lives in community, in Christian community. And so a couple of years after that, I started Encircled, Under Connected Families, who you know well and your listeners know well, um, and then launched it as its own thing. And the last four years have been just going after this idea of getting mentor circles around young people and equipping parents, grandparents, and mentors to launch our next generation. As simple as that. It's, yeah, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I rest. Somehow I brought it all together into a fairly simple explanation, but yeah. No, that's great. I, I talk to listeners about knowing their God-given space, and it just sounds like 
from your giftings and from your experiences. You brought all that together to create with God this this ministry and an opportunity. And so I know for me, I first heard about the concept of a mentor circle in an interview I did in 2020 with um, Dr. Kara, my, her last name is Powell. escaping, Powell, thank you, yeah. Dr. Kara Powell on research she had done. Had you come across that same research or was it just from your own personal experience that you were like, oh, this is a valuable thing? Yeah. What's funny about that is um, I'm not a great reader. I like, I love to start books. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, so I, um, I was already doing some encircled like things when a dad who was a part of a mentor circle for his son, he said, I heard about this idea of sticky faith and you should check it out. You're, you're doing what they're talking about. Hmm. And so then I started to read some things. I'm like, wow, people are researching about the very things that God's put in me. Yeah. And so Barna research, uh, they've done a lot of cool stuff around helping develop these resilient disciples. Fuller has done lots of amazing research around this, that importance of getting your five to one around them. Um, which I know you talked about in your podcast with Dr. Powell. And so it's been it's been lots of fun to be able to know that I don't need to be a researcher. I can use uh, amazing people like that that are doing good research to back up what we're doing. Yeah. And you told the story of the teen and without the support and what yeah. – it's like our worst fear, right? This is every parent's worst fear. Yeah. And we don't want to move from a place of fear. So kind of lay out for us, if people don't know the why, why would you say it's valuable for a child? And, and you say not even just waiting till teen and junior high. Why should a child have this mentor circle or this five to one? Yeah, thank you. Well, you know, all the research talks about the importance of, of having uh, – so. Fuller Youth Institute and Barna Research Group, they did all this research and they found that unfortunately the, st the, the stats aren't great. Uh, 60, up to 60% of young people that grow up in a, a faith community are leaving their faith as they launch into, into adulthood. Um, and so those stats aren't great. And then also there's some new research I found out about called uh, from Springtide Research and they did this study on loneliness, hmm. okay? And I'm going to read this. Um, and one of their quotes was, young people today are experiencing epidemic levels of loneliness. One in three 13 to 25-year-olds that they researched feel completely alone much of the time. Hmm. Nearly 40% have no one to talk to and feel left out. And 45% feel as if no one understands them. Hmm. Um, so there's the bad, right? There's the problem. And our social media and our, our um, online culture doesn't help with that. As I've seen with my own kids, we're yeah. battling this screen time thing. Yeah. But then the hope, there's, here's the hope. The hope is that Barna and Fuller Youth Institute really discovered that when young people have intentional adults, like the mm. five to one, yeah. that are investing in their lives around faith, purpose, and calling, they're more likely to have sustained faith as they transition into adulthood. Wow. So that's beautiful. The other thing is the research group by Springtide also discovered that loneliness can be cut down by when, I, when these same youth have adults that have caring adults investing in them, um, it decreases their loneliness factor by 10% per adult. So you oh, get wow. five to six adults that decreases it down to 10 percent, and that's that feels a little more doable. So that's the importance of really getting these intentional adults, these mentor circles around our young people. And I appreciate that it's about the faith and not about religious activity. Yeah, because often the stats are so. In, this percentage is leaving the church. Yeah. And I'm finding that there's a lot of young people that aren't leaving their faith, but they're kind of over the the church structure yeah. and some of the hypocrisies that they're seeing in the church. And yeah. and partly I'm like, that ain't wrong if the Spirit's mm -hmm. leading. If you're keeping your faith and you have a vibrant relationship yeah. with the Holy Spirit, I mean, it might look more like the early church. I'm just saying. So yeah, I love that you're saying faith. And yes, loneliness. When I was 
writing the Don't Mom Alone book, it was like the difference between being alone and isolation and the feeling of loneliness. So these kids could be in lots of activities and you're thinking, no, my kid, they're in school all day and they have practice before and after school and and they hang out with friends and they, they go to the church events and they could still feel lonely. Yeah, yeah for sure. And yeah. so, yeah, I would – I was just listening to a book on why boys don't want to share with their moms mm-hmm. and the me- the things we say that actually shut down that connection and that conversation. I can imagine that if you have a trusted adult, that that would then be a safe place that your child could communicate things that need to be said and that they need insight for as they're growing up. Yeah. So how do you find these people and what characteristics – I mean, yeah. do we even get into that yet? Or do you have another thing you want to talk through before? Yeah. Well, I, I would love just to share a couple quick stories. Of, yeah, of, please, of please. Some um, uh, young people. Um, and so young man, Daniel, who went through Encircled, he had his mom that was around him. He had a couple mentors and he had a big brother from Big Brothers, Big Sisters. And it was powerful. We have this, and I'll tell you more about this, but there's this meeting where we have this ceremony, this gathering of this mentor circle um, where they're speaking into their strengths, their gifts, um, and making commitments to ways they're going to walk with them into adulthood. And I just saw this mom, as we went through the meeting, uh, move from being stressed out, single mom, to just being at peace and to even being tearful in a positive way because she saw these young these yeah. intentional adults investing in her son yeah. and seeing him come alive when he heard the ways that he had gifts and his strengths and ways they were going to keep walking with him um and so that's one example um so for the moms out there that maybe are on their own feel on their own um there's something powerful about getting other other adults around their kids. The other one is Katie who went through um, our program five or five years ago. At the end of her meeting, um, I asked for her impact story and she said, "Um, it's amazing to now know that I have, if I'm feeling lonely or scared in the future, that I always have a circle to reach out to. And what's really fun is this Sunday, I'm I'm flying up to Alaska Mm -hmm. to partner with a ministry up working with native youth in Alaska called Kayak. Um, And she works with them as a youth pastor with her husband. And she's ministering to these young people now in Alaska and rural Alaska. And so these are just a couple of the stories of how God's shown up through these mentor circles. And it's just to see the ripple effect of a connected student who then lives a life of faith and continues that discipleship chain, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. I'm not super fussy when it comes to makeup, okay, y'all? But I do want products that work, and I want them to last all day, and I don't want to have to keep going back and reapplying all the things. When I found Thrive Cosmetics, I felt like I hit the jackpot because not only do these products work and perform all day, but they do so many other things like they're vegan, they're cruelty free, they're skin loving and clean, and they give back to communities. With every product purchased, Thrive Cosmetics donates products and funds to help communities thrive. I think that's super cool. And I love being part of change in this world. And so let me tell you about some of my favorite products. One, I use the Brilliant Eye Brightener when I need just a little glow up around my eyes. Also, Fave, fave, fave is Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara because it lasts all day. I tend to have an issue with other mascaras where it leaves like dark rings under my eyes, not with the Liquid Lash Extensions. And it's easy on my eye. It helps nourish the uh, lashes so that they grow longer and stronger. It comes off really easily. They have this flake-free tubing formula, which not only lengthens and defines the lashes, but it comes off easily with warm water and a washcloth. So it stays on when I want it to, it comes off when I need it to, and so my lashes don't break. Fantastic. Thrive Cosmetics is luxury beauty that gives back. So right now, you can get an exclusive 20% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com forward slash 
D-M-A. That's Thrive Cosmetics, and it's spelled out cause, C-A-U-S-E. M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash D-M-A and you'll get 20% off your first order. Well, okay, so <laughs> to my question. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I want this. Or may, I mean, we do not want to burden a parent today and say, oh my gosh, here's one more thing on your list. But honestly, to me, it feels like possibly a great priority for 2024. Would it be to put some energy in this instead of creating a trophy child who has all the activities and is lonely and can lose it all in an instant because they're not connected. So I'm motivated, but I don't know, like, how do you choose? So let me tell you, let me tell you about how to really get a mentor circle around young people. And I want to walk through kind of how we do it, but also acknowledging that moms and dads and and um, different people that love their kids can do it however works for them there's lots of models there's lots of books right and so i'm going to walk through kind of how we do that but we also have resources for like like you said um, helping um, start this early as early as you have a young child a toddler how can you sneak into these things and start to get this idea of who is their five to one or who are their mentor circle people? Um, And so we have some resources that I'll point you to at the end online um, and we call it our personal journey. And this is our encircled experience that helps get that mentor circle around young people. And so what we try to do is we try to really ground the youth or the child in uh, kind of four key areas. Uh, one is uh, really helping them ground them in their identity in Christ, right? So before we start to get a mentor circle around them, we really want to ground them in who, whose they are and how God sees them. They are a child of God. As I would tell my kids when they got on the bus, I would say, remember, you're a child of the risen king, right? And so remembering that if we can ground them in who their identity in Christ is, they're going to be less likely to be concerned about the other messages that the world tells them of um, what life is all about and who they are, right? We got lots of messages coming our way. The other second piece around helping them discover who they are is helping them think through who, are, what are their God-given gifts? What are their God-given gifts that, that are unique to them? Um, and we do that through helping young people take a gift inventory. Um, we have one called VIA VIA. It's a free gift inventory like Strength Finders. And it really helps kind of turn on the lights to what their God-given gifts are. And um, for my own kids, and I'm sure you can think about it for your own kids, my daughter has a gift of compassion. Um, she has a gift of um she's a little fighter. Like she is tough, right? Um, not physical fighting, but she fights for causes. My middle one has the gift of honesty, which comes across sometimes as really blunt, right? <laughs> I don't know if you have one like that, but he's amazing. And then my youngest has a gift of just bringing the fun and he's relational, right? And so if we can, if us parents and moms can start to think about what are our kids' gifts, Um, And as Connected Families talks about our gift gone awry, sometimes our gifts are those things that annoy us, but really long term, those can be good. And so we have a great gift exercise that we'll actually share with your listeners that they can utilize to have a great conversation with their child about their gifts. And it's really based on the 1 Peter 4.10 scripture of how God wants us to really better understand our God-given gifts. Um, so that we can use those to bless others with God's grace, right? Um, And so that is a a key part. Um, Then the third thing, before we get their mentor circle even started, is we want to help them create a vision. And this goes to the Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So if we can help our kids dream and imagine how God might use our gifts to bless others and to make an impact on this world, 
they're more likely to actually do that. There's a research study by, by Harvard that um, they basically said, if we actually write down our goals, we're 40% more likely to attain them. And if we share them with someone to hold us accountable, like an intentional adult, um, we're 20% more likely to attain them. So that's 60% more likely to attain the things that God put in us to impact our world. So, so all of that is kind of the discovery, the preparation to get a mentor circle, because then when a young person knows their identity, their gifts, a vision, they can share that with their mentor circle of their family, friends, mentors, to really help them live out those things in the world. Um, and that's where it becomes really intentional. It's great. Love all of that. We had Jamie Winship on and he talked about identity. And so that it's good to have that reinforcement of, yes, this matters. This is important. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So then as we think about inviting their mentor circle, right? Yeah. I want to demystify or make it less scary. Um, mentor circle are really the people that your child sees as supports as those are the ones that show up to their, their sporting events, their concerts, there to say hi to them at church, or maybe they're part of your life group. Maybe it's your, hopefully um, maybe some grandparents, aunts, uncles, coaches, small group leaders at church. And these are just the people that are on your child's side, right? They're on team Sophia or Reed. Um, and so, so what we try to do is, is we really help the youth think through who are those people? Who would you pick? Who would you want to show up? Who do you want to have in your life that you see that can help you in areas of faith, in areas of uh, maybe what you want to be when you're older, in areas of service, or maybe they they love to play video games or to um, be on sports teams or play instruments. How how can you get these people to speak into you and encourage you in those gifts? And then it culminates and with Encircled, we have this ceremony kind of thing. Uh, and it's really getting their mentor circle to have a gathering. And so a guide who I'm a guide for many people to help walk through this process, but a mom, a dad, an uncle, a, a small group leader at church could be the guide that would walk your child or your youth through this experience to have this ceremony. And this ceremony is really inviting uh, this mentor circle to come around them in intentional ways. Um, because I think so many mentors and people that care about young people aren't sure how to do it. They aren't sure, well, I don't know if I can be a mentor because I've never read the book. I don't have the degree. Um, well, that's so fun because you don't need those things. You just need to have, I believe it's so important for obviously to have the Holy Spirit. If they are um, living for Jesus and doing life in this world, they're going to be a perfect mentor because they are transparently walking alongside of young people to help them walk through life, to help answer questions, to pray for them, to encourage them, to support them in what gets them out of bed in the morning and gets them excited about life. And so our gathering really helps them better understand this young person's identity in Christ, how to pray for them around those messages right? Around what are their God-given gifts so that they can speak into the gifts they see them playing out in the world. Um, and then for them to hear this young person's vision and to jump on board, I see so many of these people as a part of these mentor circles encouraged because they're like, maybe I need to develop a vision. I am 40 years old and I don't know what I want to be when I'm older, right? Yeah. And so there's this like symbiotic, like transfer of knowledge um, that these mentors experience and they realize, wow, there's hope because this young person has a passion for Jesus and wants to impact the world in their unique ways. So, um, so then it culminates in this time of blessing where these mentors come around them and encourage them and commit to ways they're going to walk with them as they launch into adulthood and they bless them and pray for them. And um, it's a, it's a powerful coming around um, and encircling of young people. So. Okay, ladies, I have a new year's resolution for you. That's actually easy to keep. 
this is the year to finally stop wearing uncomfortable shapewear. That's right. Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love. Honey Love has revolutionized compression technology so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating while wearing effective shapewear. You'll immediately feel and see the difference. What I appreciate uh, about Honey Love's best-selling superpower short is one, it's to me easier to get on and off than other shapewear I've used. Two, it's not like universally compressed. There are target areas. They have the signature X that targets and sculpts the midsection without squeezing your curves. It's like the side of it has this um, boning, flexible boning that's hidden in the seams. And so it holds it up without just squeezing you all over, if that makes sense. And it has boost bands in the back of the thigh that give your little booty an amazing shape. Anyway, I'm a big fan of the Superpower Short, but it doesn't stop there. I also really love their comfortable bras, tanks, leggings. Uh, If you want to check out some good products, go to Honey Love. And moms, when was the last time you treated yourself to some of the best bras and shapewear on the market? So go to honeylove.com forward slash DMA and you're going to save 20%. Now you need to use our exclusive link and support our show by going to honeylove.com forward slash DMA, get yourself 20% off. After you purchase, they're going to ask you where you heard about them. Please let them know you heard about them on the Don't Mom Alone podcast and start the new year with confidence thanks to Honey Love. Y'all have heard me rave about HelloFresh and how it helps get dinner on the table so I can solve my need to get the family together, to simplify meal planning, and to save money. Well, They have partnered and now own Green Chef, which means, good news for us, there is a wider array of meal plans to choose from because Green Chef is CCOF certified, which means they have keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free. I even saw that they have a new gut and brain health meal plan that has an array of nutritious dinners, snacks, functional drinks, all to support the well-being of your gut and enhance your cognitive health. What's also great is if you do have some of these goals for your family or for yourself, you can just let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean because they have chefs who are nutritionist approved creating recipes for you with certified organic fruits and vegetables and organic cage-free eggs and sustainably sourced seafood, literally checking all the boxes for you. I saw that they have over 80 plus flavor packed options. So definitely worth checking out if that meets the goals for your family. Go to greenchef.com slash 60 DMA. Use the code 60 DMA. And I'm saying it, you need to write out the numbers, okay, y'all? Six zero. Because you will get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. So just go to greenchef.com slash 60 DMA. Use that code 60 DMA. And you know what? Green Chef, it is the number one meal kit for eating well. Check it out. So tell me, around what age would you imagine a ch- you asking a child this? I know you said like even at toddler, you can start the steps of identity and giftings and vision. But yeah, how, when do you imagine a ceremony kind of happening? Yeah. And, and what expectation do you have of a mentor like – are they committing to the rest of their life? I know you said into adulthood, but like, yeah, that might feel overwhelming to a mentor. Yeah, if, yeah. If you're yeah, like, yeah, hey, here's my twelve year old. Will you be their friend for six years? Like, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, that sounds overwhelming. Yeah, so great question. Um, I would say our experience for for literally getting a a, a circle around young people, usually when a youth is around their sophomore junior year they're starting to think about what's next, right? They're thinking, they're planning, oh, I should go to college and these things. So those are great times to really solidify a mentor circle and to to walk through an experience like, like what we have. But I would say to be able to start it earlier, because we researched a bunch of youth workers and we said, hey, this is our program, this is what we have going on. And they said, you should start this earlier, right? You should start to plant these seeds Um, in young people when they're in elementary school and parents should start thinking about who might be their mentor circle. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say, I would say it never hurts to gather a circle around young people. 
um, when they're even in elementary middle school. It's just their vision will be probably a little more random. Like, Hey, I want to, you know, rock this video game and, and do all this, you know, they're not going to necessarily have like this big vision of how God's going to use them, but to get a, a circle around them in their middle school years is, is, is really a powerful time. Cause as you know, a lot changes when kids are teenagers, right? And the voices, our voice, I know for me, uh, my 15 year old is less interested in what I have to say, even though I'm a pretty big deal, right? Like I'm a therapist. <laughs> I've been doing ministry for 30 years. He's less interested in what I have to say, which is hard, right? For us as parents. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that's why we need to start to get these other voices around them that we trust that are living for Jesus, that really want to be a voice to them. So the other, to answer your other question, I always tr like to take the pressure off these mentor circle people to say, um, we're not asking you to do 20 more things. We're not asking you to commit to texting this child every day or to doing intensive Bible studies or taking them for trips around the world. Um, but what we are asking is that you would commit to the things you're already doing mm -hmm. and pray for how you might want to be even more intentional now that you know what lights up this child as far as what they want to be and who they want to be in the future. And so it's really fun to see how these mentor circles start to think about who should I connect them with? Um, they want to be a lawyer. They want to be a plumber. Like I should connect them with another Christian that's doing that. Or mm -hmm. they really love sports or they really want to go deeper in their faith or learn about different spiritual disciplines. So seeing them connect them with resources and other people is where I s see the magic happen of this mentor circle idea. I kind of imagine sitting down, thinking about each of my kids, the, the younger ones, yeah. um, particularly the ones who may not have the official thing, like you were talking about a sophomore, junior, but brainstorming who has influence in their life, like you listed yeah. off all those different people and maybe making a document. I don't know if you have a template but like some kind of one pager PDF that kind of has this identity and gifting and whatever yeah. vision they have as a way of an invitation to say, hey, I see the impact you have on Knox or Watts. And I really just wanted to thank you for that influence and just let you know this is who God made my child to be and this is yeah. who they what they hope to do. And and it's not like this, and will you be their mentor forever? It's more just acknowledging the impact yep. and giving them almost, I feel like, a foundation or like a framework to move from mm -hmm. that gives purpose and intentionality to the time they are spending. Yeah. I love that. Well, we do have <laughs> – what's funny is we do have one-pagers for oh, each good. age and stage from zero all the way to young adults. Um, and they're one pages that parents, mentors, and grandparents can utilize to start to think about this idea of identity gifts and vision and mentor circles. So, so I love that it can start with just a conversation and, um, even pulling aside people that you see as possible mentors to start to say, Hey, this is something I learned about. And would you be praying for how you might be more intentional with our son or our daughter? And there's something so freeing about that, knowing it's not all on our shoulders as a parent. Um, so, Okay, I'm going to throw the question of what about the teen that you can see, it? okay, this person is in your life and they care about you and they're yeah. amazing. They have Holy Spirit. This person's in your life. They're amazing. They have Holy Spirit. Like these would be great people for you to have as in your mentor circle. Or I've been like, hey, you should see them more regularly. Yeah. You should text them or respond to their texts. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel stuck in my ability to influence mm -hmm. this good thing. Yep. Yep. What are your what's what your are your tips or advice on that? Yeah. No, I think that's real. I would say there's something about having someone else bring up this idea other than a parent. Not saying that a parent can't do it. But I find when a, uh, a good family friend or an aunt or an uncle that, and you don't have to use our resources, but our resources would walk through how to do that. 
um, can just open up this idea that it's important to have other voices in your life other than mom and or dad. And so I think just, yeah, asking them, having another person um, kind of walk through that conversation that you trust opens up this possibility. And then they're like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. And then even though that's something you've said like 50 times, um, for some reason, they hear the voice of the of, of somebody else with, oh, that's a great idea. Um, so I would say if you don't have somebody that could do that, maybe try and kind of the back door of if your child is someone that sees, um, I don't know, it, if they believe in YouTube more than um, what you're having to say, maybe find some, some, um, you know, a Ted talk or something on the importance of this. And maybe it's dropping an article on their desk um, to show the importance of other voices in their lives. But I think asking the question and sharing the research, Hey, I, I desire for you to know that you are meant to live in your life in community Uh, with others that would come around you. And um, I'm praying for this about you and I can't force you to do these things, but it's really important. And even sharing from your own experience, who are the people that are part of your circle, Heather, right? Who are the people that have walked with you in your life around faith, purpose, and calling? Um, And just sharing that because uh, I think that's important, right? When we share our faith journey with our kids and our shared experience So I don't know if any of those. No, I think that's exactly, uh, it's kind of like when moms are like, how do I get my kids to have their own quiet time? I ask, are you having your quiet time? Like you kind of have to go first. And so moms, this is a good time too. Like, do you have a five to one? Yeah. I know that personally I was invited into a life team where it's six of us that get together. So it is a five to one and we get together once a month and we are sharing the hard and the good and going deeper. And it's like a confessional community, right? Like these are the things I'm thinking and you love me anyway. And so I'm not alone. I carry you with me. And so I am modeling that for my boys that they know I'm setting aside time and doing this and that I am impacted by that time. Yeah. And so I think that is good. I'm curious, like, for one of my boys who's the older oldest one, yep. I know he has these adults that he does go to that I do really respect these adults. Do yep. I need at this point, do we need to call it an official mentor circle or can I just maybe let it be the thing that it is and possibly I can reach out to those adults and thank them yeah, and just say this is – I can give them the info about Quaid and yeah. it doesn't have to be like a ceremony. Yeah. But yeah. Do, you f- do you find that the officialness of it – Yeah matters? That's a great question. Well, I'm, (laughs) the funny thing is it it was when my son was being confirmed when he was 15, I had this moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, I, (laughs) I do this really well with youth all over the place and I'm not Mm -hmm. doing it with my own child. And I was just like, oh my gosh, what the heck am I doing? So I have now become more purposeful. I don't know if you've heard of intentional father and, and John Tyson and his work, but he has this great set of resources and I wish he would create one for girls. And I think yeah. he's, his wife is working on it. Um, but this idea of equipping these mentors and these dads to have this great, these great resources to walk with their sons as they get ready for, for adulthood has been really something that I'm, I just signed up last night and I'm going to start to do this with my 15 year old and three other dads and their sons Mm -hmm. um, and start walking through this journey and really walk what I'm talking about. And it's going to be challenging because my son and I, we don't always meet eye to eye with lots of things. And I, I get tripped up uh, with how different we are, but I I love them and I want, I want to model that. So, so I would say, it doesn't need to be a specific ceremony. Um, I I think there's something powerful about gathering those people in the same room at the same time to have Mm. a a time of blessing. Um, And there's books about that too, um, raising the modern day night, some of those sorts of things where there's this blessing thing. And there's something powerful about really having everyone in the same room to do that. Um, But that blessing can happen through letters, through notes, through maybe it's their graduation party um, where we've 
I have done that where we, sh we the whole circle showed up to a, a, a young man's graduation party. And we had already done the encircled meeting, but it was a year later, we came together and prayed over him again. Um, mm -hmm. And just there's something powerful about having those people that your son or daughter chooses that they know are have their back um, and to speak truth and life into them um, can be a really powerful thing. So, Okay. All right. Well, I'm inspired. Is there any last word or encouragement that you wanted to say to whoever's listening? Yeah, I would, I would just say for you moms out there, um, you don't need to raise your child alone, right? Yeah. Don't do uh, it. Don't try. Don't, don't mom alone. Don't mom alone. Tell yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so you have the Holy Spirit that's speaking through you in those moments where I know I'm really good at um, apologizing and doing lots of redos with my kids because I mess up all the time. But I would say try to start to pray for and think about who might be a part of your son or daughter's mentor circle or whatever you want to call it. Also, you are a key part of that. I think they say Fuller did the research and a youth or a child is more likely to have sustained faith if they have an intentional relationship by a parent um, that's modeling faith. So that is huge. So, so even though you might think your son or daughter is turning off your voice, they're listening, they're watching. And then also try to encourage and find what are those gifts? What are those God-given gifts that each is of your son or daughters has? I think there's a version of train up your child in the way that they should go. There's a version that says train up your child in the way they're bent yeah. um, because they're each unique, right? And so mm -hmm. notice that uniqueness and just encourage that even when you feel discouraged because your son or daughter needs that in this world that's telling them all sorts of other things. So those are my my pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, we are going to connect in the show notes to all the places that um, they can connect with you and your resources. Lots of amazing resources if you want a more structured curriculum or even support. And we'll connect to that gifts testing. And yeah. even as a parent, your gifts, right? You have a test for that a little assessment. Okay. Yeah. So they, you can do it with your child um, okay. to understand your yours and your son or daughter's God-given gifts. And then we also have a, um, a mentor boost subscription. If you are part of a church, um, would love you to point your youth pastor or pastor, family pastor to our resources to think about how to get mentor circles around um, their youth. Uh, so we have some really cool stuff there and reach out to me. I'll share my email. Would love to help walk with whoever wants to do that um, to get your resources you need to 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 really launch our next generation with sustained faith. So thank you for having me. It's just, it's a joy and I just feel honored and humbled to be a part of it today. Well, it was a good time. Thank you so much. I'm inspired. 2024, you're the mentor circle. Let's go. Like I said in this episode, my hope in introducing you to Ben is to support you. If this is something you've been wanting or you've been feeling a need to support your kids, this is an area we don't want you to mom alone. <laughs> and it's in the spiritual health of yourself and of your kids. And so please check out the resources. There's a lot in the show notes to connect you with, even if you're helping your kids learn their identity, kind of like we've been talking about uh, in other episodes, or know their giftedness and if you need help getting that mentor circle together, let Ben help you out. And once you do, there's great curriculum over there too. So again, this is us just holding hands with you if that's something you desire for your family. And it's not to add another list. Y'all, we don't need more burdens. And you're not a bad mom if you don't do this, okay? It's just an option. And I'm telling you, as my kids get older, the more I see the value of including other adults in their lives and having their voices resonate with what we believe and say. And um, anyway, I'll stop with my spiel. I'm going to do a little prayer for us, okay? Lord, I thank you that you did not create us to worship you in isolation, that you made us um, uniquely but also put us in communities, that you as a trinity – are an example of that, like the different aspects of God in one. And so help us to 
just really figure out what's holding us back from seeking help from others, um, from inviting others into our lives to come to you with those barriers and to ask you to help heal us. I pray, Lord, um, in my own home that you would help me to push through um, some resistance and to be intentional in sending out those emails or having those conversations that I would prioritize the things that really matter to my mom heart. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would guide us each day, bring to mind those who can walk alongside our kids and um, for the main goal, Lord, of bringing you glory and bringing your full restoration to this earth and bringing light to a really dark world. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thanks y'all. Join me back here next week. Uh, I'm excited to just, you know, here we go. Hit the ground running with 2024. Lots of things we can cover. I asked for some ideas and y'all had you know, really solid ideas and really, I mean, my heart hurts for all of the hard things y'all are walking through. So thank you for sharing with me, those of you who did, and I'll hopefully bring the kind of guests you need and the support you need in 2024 to remind you that you don't mom alone. All right. Adios. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Don't Mom Alone podcast. If you're wanting to connect with more people and more resources to help remind you that you're not alone, head over to don'tmomalone.com. That's where you'll also find show notes with any links mentioned by our guests. Most importantly, I want you to know the good news, the great news that you're not alone because God has promised to always be with you. With faith in Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and rose again, Jesus said when he left, he was going to leave a helper, a comforter to be with us. God in us, moms, that's superpower. So while you're washing dishes at your kitchen sink, while you're driving to and from work, while you're feeding that baby late into the night, while you're cleaning sticky floors, God promises to be just as present with you as when you're worshiping in a church pew. As it says in Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Now that's good news. Have a great day.